there's the reason I call these characters the primitive elites. You know, um, we tend to think of primitivity, or at least in the colonial and racist sense, as people who mm. can't speak, you know, the international languages as they're considered, you know, somebody who doesn't have a certain level of material and economic sophistication. But then there's a certain kind of primitivity in this country that actually, you know, dresses really sharply and is around here with Jessica's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it, it, it's a unique kind of primitivity that is stuck with our elites. And you see the problem with that kind of, uh, you know, again, because they went through the education system, but as we said before, the education system was not for literacy and you know, giving kids skills and an opportunity at employment. It was an assimilation model to ensure that once you jump through these hoops, you become part of the 3%, your competence notwithstanding. But then you suddenly, with Kibaki, there's enough resources flowing around to allow for alternative cultural spaces. People begin to mm -hmm. have conversations that these elites who went through school but didn't study can't counter. You know, there's a lot of you know, invention of new language, but also giving language to new realities, you know, and something that this elite did not, or even still up to now, do not have the language to counter that. And so what does it do? It creates a paranoia. We began to lose the resources. So for example, you look at the year 2015, about 2.2 million SMEs uh, shut down, you know, which is like one of the highest rate of loss of businesses you know owned by individuals in the country of course the once the resources begin to, to you know to lose out then the the, the 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 grip of the state on a lot of these cultural faces becomes too much so a lot of them shut down but then a lot of these people are still out here but then how are they handled one of the ways they're handled is you know begin to be called names you know we use the name activist as sort of a pejorative you know and we say rabble rousers you know uh, use language. What is your solution? You're always criticizing. Mm. You know mm. you. Do you so see anything positive? Uh, do you ever see anything positive? So it becomes anybody who is not falling for the straight and narrow narrative that has been sold, you know, uh, for for decades, you you begin to be ostracized. This is you know basically being pushed out into the margins, and you become sort of a hot, you know, this this a loose cannonball. We, we we can't deal with that one. You know. And so that, of course, comes with a certain level of social and economic sabotage. And eventually you get to pretty much reconsolidate this space. So a lot of the death of these cultural spaces, there's the economic questions. There's the fact that these primitive elites could encounter a lot of what was being said there. And, you know, with the one thing about primitive el elitism is it's, um, first of all, it's chronic incapacity to develop anything, but also paranoia. And... Uh, mm. You know, you can almost say an entire class-wide insecurity. You simply have this whole cluster of characters who cannot live or cannot coexist with something that they can't appropriate, they can't um, own it, or they can't, you know, pretty much have their hand on it, you know, or control over it. People have been telling me, we need Tibet because Germany has engineers. <laughs> can you, you just explain... It explain what the problem is with that direct logic the problem is not engineers it's the engineering <laughs> um and and yes we are talking about tivet yet i know engineering graduates are not are not getting jobs where will they go yet the government every last thing every last engineering project is is awarded to 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 foreign companies who can who can uh, grease their channels the right way where 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 does where does a qualified kenyan engineer go now and some of them are some of them get employed in government not to build anything but to go and inspect projects is the drainage working etc cetera, etc cetera. and if you write a report that okay from your knowledge the, again the 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 problem of using your knowledge you go and do your calculation from what you are taught in class and you realize this drainage here it's not going to work when the rains come water will accumulate here and knock down that wall there you write that in your report you will get a phone call that night from maybe even the cabinet level or senior level asking why are you bugging our contractors you are not disturbing our contractors who do you think you are 
Wow. So sign off, sign off on that thing now, Nyamaze. My goodness. <laughs> Let me start with this. The whole idea where it came from, the, men, the mindset it came from, that you can take your citizens who are jobless and strike a deal with another government to employ them goes completely counter to the idea of why you have citizens in the first place. The reason a government is in government is because citizens gave them the power to do that. There's always this contract, this social contract between a citizen and their government, where I'm giving you the power to be uh, my leader, and in exchange, you're going to make it possible for me to have access to infrastructure, jobs, security to have the kind of things that allow me as a citizen to live a human dignified life so that I'm not an animal living out there, homeless, hungry, and fighting for scrounges, just scrounging around for scraps. That's a social contract. And then after I have signed that social contract with someone I have put in power, they come and tell me, hmm, I can't give you what you have contracted me to do. I need to send you to someone else so that you can get it. But I did not sign a contract with Europe, with Saudi Arabia, with the US. I signed a contract with my government so that you can give me these things which will allow me simple human dignity. I do not want to live, to, 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 to live this place and go to another country to look for money so that I can take care of my loved ones. I expect you to do that. So that is the first thing. It was extremely mm -hmm. insulting, not just insulting, but it came from a very ignorant place that we have leaders in Kenya who do not understand that social contract. It's the most basic lesson in politics. If there's any leader who doesn't understand the social contract, they have no business being in leadership at all. Another thing about Kenyans is that uh, our media, oh, yeah. when you open up the, 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 the newspaper, the front page, what you'll see is what politicians are saying or what crazy the idea now they have, what the fancy of the moment is. You know, it, it's BBI, tomorrow it will be something else. And not so our, our the, the, what we consume is defined by very few people. Uh, the ideas that we have yeah. are ideas of these crazy people who, who, who rule us, mm. you know? <laughs> so, uh, so, they, they, so our ideas will be crazy, you know? <laughs> so we consume nothing, you know? No one knows what goes on beyond, you know, Uhuru Ruto Raila, no one, like, you know, anything else is immaterial to, 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 to Kenyans because when you open up, you know, when, when you listen to the news, that's all they talk about, you know, nothing else. And uh, so when they come with this idea that uh, universities uh, are to blame for unemployment, you know, the people run with it because they are, it's being said by the elites themselves who have been in control of those universities. So if, mm. if someone like Magoha criticizes universities for not, uh, for unemployment himself, he was, uh, he was a, ch a, a vice chancellor of a university, then who has failed? It's him. Why, why is he running you know, the, the education ministry, right? Uh, because he was, he was there, right? <laughs> so mm. do you fail and then you get promotion, uh, you know, in the same field that you failed in? What's going on with BBI? It's engineering our society to be put into, to be put as commodities in sacks. And then each sack has a person or people in charge of the sack. Mm. They, pre they, they, they present the sack as a bargaining chip to get themselves either positions or money or whatever. And the contents of the sack, i.e. the people, are somehow engineered to be happy that 
the owner of their sack is at the table, is at the high table. If someone mm-hmm. comes and tells you that you need to do this so that you don't fight, someone should that's never come threat. and tell me that. That's it's 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 a threat. It's a very bad threat. Someone mm. tell, comes and tells me that you need to sign on to this. You need to make your me your leader so that you don't fight with Wandia. <laughs> why was I was I was I fighting with Wandia and why was I fighting with Wandia in the first place? Yeah. And what? Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing they are offering that addresses any problem it's about engineering it's it's actually the creation of a feudal society we had these liege lords and they were the peasants so you are there was no there was no free person who is your lord you are from which lordship or whatever um which which territory controlled by which lord Mm. and that that's those are the boxes we are being put into now and i think yeah, it's engineering our society because we are losing the individual. BBI mm. has room for the tribe, the demographic, the, the, the demographic, i.e. youth, i.e. women or elderly people. It does not, it kills the individual. And your it kills your right to associate with other people on different, different yeah, criteria. Just, it doesn't have to be yes. the gender, ethnic and whatever. We celebrate that because we've we've lost our soul and we only see we like to see spectacles, big mm. things. If you don't come from blue blood, you will not yeah. be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the era of where your papers and Sidriama doctor will yeah. will be yeah. something. That yeah. BPI is destroying that. It's, it, yes, exactly, exactly. Because even even in their their profession is is being so stratified that you, there are certain doctors who seem to have a clean path into senior yes. government positions, etc., yeah. etc. Look at look at the lineage of people like the director general, people like Amoth, and then you see the at the other end of the spectrum those who are suffering, like the late Mogusu who passed away. He came from the, the village. Yes, yes, and and the the lineage. The lineage. Amoth is the son of a colonial senior chief. Aki Kenyans. Why are Kenyans not understanding? I th- I think the language of liberalism and work hard and you'll get where you want to go if you really work hard. It has been so entrenched that people are refusing to see that yeah. the system is rigged. You either you're either known yeah. or you or you struggle. Yeah, and the commitment to not use your brain. They are terrified to. To think some people actually know but oh god i can't deal with it they know there's a problem but no i can't deal with it but we are many of us it's not that people are doing it alone we are many of us we need to come together but those are the people who attack us yes for pointing yes, these because, things out yes yes of course they they, are, they attack us for pointing these things out because we are um the slave quarters are comfortable and freedom now to them looks like sleeping in the bush it looks like work yeah work. yeah it looks like work sleeping in the bush deciding yes. that i i need to plant vegetables not just going to till the master's cotton because you have to think should i plant vegetables should i plant waru should i plant spinach or whatever mm. because that's your own farm but there are some people who in fact i saw someone I don't know where I saw it somewhere online. Someone said that to a bird born in captivity, flying looks like an illness. What explains why our generation is still unable to articulate the issues publicly? We, we were silenced, you know? And, mm. and, and, and so after a while, you only, when, what happens when you get silenced? You, you, get, you, get, you start to just you're reduced to first of all you're introduced to an individual because suddenly yes. you don't you don't you don't feel the sense of community community uh, what makes this young people so admirable and what makes it even what made us great as young people because we always had a sense of community mm. so so when we were taking on moi you know um there's a sense of that i'm not alone in this you know there's a whole bunch of us you know so that's why there's even a sense of sacrifice if you look at sort of what is happening with sort of some of our movements you know, mm. all those bodies that were put online. There was a sense of community, you know? And I always say the junction was 2000 and 2002 because mm. you go from this sense of high euphoria. Yes. And then 
it's, 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 like, it's, it's like a high. It's like a drop of a high. It's like a, mm. like a downer. Then you hit the bottom, and 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 once you learn that, you start being very afraid of of that highness. You feel drowned out. You, it, it's like you're talking to a wall. You are so afraid because you you almost don't want to dare to hope too much because you, it, you have dropped so hard and you have watched others drop and never recover. So what do you start becoming? You start becoming ridiculously pragmatic. By the time now we're talking hustler movements, it's like, where do you even start? So, so it becomes pragmatic to just shut up. And then in the sense of you, you can't, Yes, you could be a silent majority, but that's why they're called a silent majority. The silent majority are unaware that there are others. So you think you're alone, which is why it's so easy to op oppress huge masses of people. Because as individuals, we think we're alone. We think we're the only ones who are like this. Because the little small pockets of, 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 of opposition or the ones who are sort of implicit dominance are making so much noise. Yes. That we just think there is no way my point of view has been held. This is what mainstream is thinking. We decide that if I don't talk about it, it's going to be okay. But mm -hmm. then look at the distrust that is now playing out right now. You see, you're the kind of person who wakes up every morning and walks some miles to industrial area to spend 11, 12 hours there to earn peanuts so that you can pay for the shack in, in uh, Kibera, Korokocho, wherever it is. So you begin to mistrust anyone that owns a car. And this mistrust did not happen with the so-called Hasla dynasty division. This mistrust started a long time ago when your boss refused to give you better pay. When, when, when someone, when your neighbor decided to steal from you, when your child was beaten up and his lunch was stolen, all this trauma became part of I don't trust anyone and it's playing out now so it's 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 we carry things and we dump our our mistrust our pain that's just bottled in on other people my talking about it was my way of saying I don't want any of this mm. I don't want to have I, I don't want to have this because if I bottle it up the person closest to me is going to bear the wrath of it and the person closest to me is the person I live with I'm going to not trust him or anything he does. I'm going to feel like I need to load it off of him. I'm going to be carrying this pain. If I live with relatives or anyone, the same thing. My students are going to bear the pain. And it's because of all this trauma I've decided not to talk about. I, I said I was going to talk and I talked. I told anyone I could meet the story, <laughs> whether they wanted to hear it or not. I said, say it. Sadly, actually, these children were, were um, rescued, if you can call it rescued, because apparently they went of their own accord. Mm. But it was the police that did it. None of them came home. None of them got called and got told, uh, so and so, come, can you come home? We mm. need you at home. They were brought home by police. And this engineering is bleeding throughout our society. That's such like that from the very as i said from the very tops if you look at the 2020 2021 national budget mm. the biggest allocation is to police or security organs biggest and it was the remember this was june so it's like the covid budget covid is the the issue on the table and we gave the biggest chunk of money to police not to healthcare not to education to put safety things in schools but to police and that that points that that shows where where we are going as a society. So now the police police are uh, beating people to prevent COVID. Police are retrieving uh, truant children. children. And what more? We how much do we expect these police uh, these police to do? And what will remain as our responsibility as people? Because we are just mm. becoming, we are just becoming sort of com material commodities machines to be engineered in one way or another. At the time of the Ambira boys saga. Yes, yes. Me, I was saying, this is a really simple problem. If you have boys who are celebrating the end of Form 4, 
Do f- give them another way to celebrate yeah. other than start threat- sending threats at you will not get a certificate yes. of good conduct. These are the spa- spanner which is used to now uh, engineer engineer our society from from every every single point. And and it's true, like with, with the masks and stuff, mm. if you find someone without a mask, the worst thing you can do is arrest him and take him into a cell crowded with other people. If COVID is the issue, a cell is the one place you shouldn't take someone. Mm. The police should probably should be out there with packets of masks and give them out to people if they if they see someone without a mask or tell someone to put on their mask. But yeah, we are using, we think we can enforce everything. Even in my field, the conservation, mm. we think we can fence Fencing is a solution. I, I always say we, 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 are, we are remarkably uh, myopic when, when we laugh at the outgoing U.S. president when he was saying he'll build a fence uh, between U.S. and Mexico. Mm. Yet right now, there's a fence being built around Mount Kenya. Right now, there are fences being built around Kakamega Forest. So we, we are absolutely no different. We are trying to engineer the environment now. Our image of freedom is basically is to be, for those of us who survived Moi, is to be like Moi. And they say, this is the impact of the trauma because the impact of the trauma gives you, gives you this facade that for you to be a person, for you to be a man, for you to be a full human, you need to be like your oppressor. When I lived in Zambia, one of the things I really appreciated was interacting a lot with people from all over Africa, particularly from Southern Africa. And therefore, sometimes I would just ask my class to try and help me understand the levels of violence in South Africa. And they made very interesting distinctions. The African National Congress, led by Mandela and others, really not fighting for freedom. They were fighting for inclusion. When you are fighting for inclusion, you're basically saying, I am happy to sit at my master's table. And the coloniality of power does not, is not really opposed to that. But it gives up this false sense of freedom and healing and, you know, we are doing okay. So, if I bring it back home, <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, I, I, I see people, you know, uh, condemning Raila Odinga or ODM and others. And Malimu, I say, you know what? Raila has been consistent. He's been fighting for inclusion. Go back and look at the pattern. It is us who are ascribing Raila all these other labels. No, 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 no. He's actually been very consistent. So when you look at even the founding fathers, and here I'm not including our founding mothers, when you look at the founding fathers, they fought for inclusion. Mm-hmm. They got, we got inclusion in 1963. What Fanon said, very poetically, is that every generation has its mission Mm -hmm. to fulfill or betray. The generation who fought against the colonizers, that was their mission. But eventually there are people who are not born under European settlers. Eventually there are people who are born in a society where the people who represent authority are fellow Africans fellow black people. What Fanon was saying when I use that example of um, embracing new ideas, new cultural resources, create Kenyan ways of doing things. You see, that requires a new generation, which means dialectically, they now have to overcome the ruling group who created independence. Mm-hmm. Whether they so the, the message is those people have to understand, they have to be like Moses. They have to step back and let the next generation rise. 
And so the, the task of every generation is a paradoxical one. It's to achieve with humility. The humility is to understand that you're not a god or a goddess. You're to achieve enough to, with enough room for others to take the mantle of achievement and build it in what fits them. You see? Mm -hmm. And too many people are looking to imitate those who preceded them rather than to transform their society to what it needs. Mm 